this video is about the theory behind tightness testing. Now it might not seem important in the real world, but for your assessment and for your exams, you need to be able to explain why and how you carry out tightness tests and lead by tests. So as a gas engineer, it is important for you to know, and these are the questions that the assessor will probably ask you, you'll definitely get exam questions on it, when a test is required, how to recognize various test instruments, how to carry out a let by test, and how to carry out the tightness test itself. first place to look at regarding tightness tests are the regulations themselves. You've got a regulate, in fact I think you've got two regulations exams and this question or a question similar to it will appear in those exams. Now where a person carries out work in relation to any installation pipe work which might affect the gas tightness of any part of that pipework, he shall immediately carry out a tightness test afterwards. Okay, so it's got, the work you carried out has got to have affected the gas tightness of the installation. If I give you an example, if you walk in and somebody just wants their radiators cleaned and the pipework polished to make it look nice and shiny, then you polish the pipework up, clean the radiators and that's all they want, then you haven't affected the tightness of any of those systems you can walk out without carrying a tightness test. However, if you've had to disconnect a boiler and then reconnect it, you have put yourself in a position where the tightness may have been affected. You might not have done the nut up enough or the olive would have slipped, some reason like that, then you carry out the leak test. So it's got to have affected the gas tightness of any part of the system for you to, by law, have to carry out a tightness test. There are seven occasions or situations where by law, you must carry out a tightness test. They are that if there's been a report of, or if you smell gas within a property, you carry out the tightness test. If you've installed new pipe work, you carry out a tightness test. If you have carried out work on a gas fitting, and that includes anything on the gas system that might affect its gas tightness, before restoring the gas supply after work, and that's work that affects the gas tightness, before fitting a gas meter, after connecting any extension and immediately before purging. They are the seven times that by law you must carry out a tightness test.
Now moving on to the test equipment, there are two types. There's electronic and water gauge type test equipment. Regardless of what type you use, they should be suitably ranged. They should be in the right range. It's no use using uh, a U gauge that only reads up to 10 millibars on a 20 millibar system. So they should be suitably ranged. They should be zeroed before use. And in the case of the electronic gauges, they should be calibrated in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Electronic gauges have got to be more accurate than the water gauges, than the U gauge. So the electronic gauges should register at least one decimal point. So if you look at that picture of that gauge there, where it says CO2, it then says 8.3%. So it, you know it's capable of registering a decimal point. It should be capable of an accuracy to a tenth of a millibar, 0.1 millibars and it should be calibrated every every 12 months so every year you send your um, your gauge away to the manufacturer and it comes back calibrated with a calibration certificate and you can carry on your work the U gauges must have readings in millibar and they must have an accuracy of half a millibar. So here's another common question either cropping up in your exams or being asked to you by your assessor and that's how do you carry out a tightness test if you've just installed a new set of pipework but there's no meter been fitted yet. The gas company haven't come down and fitted a meter. You need to move on to the next job, but you need to know that the installation that you've just made is gas tight. Well, you do an air test. And what you need for an air test is some sort of pump. It shows here on this picture a bicycle pump, but it can be any form of pump. Anything that will pressurize the system to 20 millibars or above and then you need and these are commercially available you need a tap system a T tap system that allows you to open and close the pressure within the system itself so if you get asked that you just say you do the same exactly the same scenario but you use air instead of gas. Now, if you're working on a system that is connected to the gas pipe work and has got a meter fitted, the first thing you need to know is what type of meter it is. Because depending on what type of meter you've got that determines the amount of drop in pressure you're allowed during your two meter tightness test. Different meters allow different drops. This is called the permissible pressure drop and it will tell you within your two minute test how much pressure your system is allowed to lose before it fails a tightness test. Now in all the gas books you get this little chart or something very similar showing you your permitted permissible drop according to the meter type so for example this one here let's just use the top line if the pipe if there's no pipe work bigger than 28 millimeters and you've got an electric e6 meter fitted 
then during your two minute test you are allowed an eight millibar drop before you declare that you've got a leak so you can go from 20 all the way down to 12 millibar during your two minute test and you and if it does that then it's passed the test if you've got a u6 meter you're only allowed a four millibar drop it's only allowed to go from 20 down to 16 anything more than that and the test has been failed so you need to know what type of meter so that you can work out how much of a permitted permissible drop you're allowed right, the permitted permissible drop or the permissible pressure drop for new installations so if you've put in some new pipe work but you're incorporating existing appliances for that new part of the installation for the new pipework that you've put in it needs to be tested for gas tightness and for the new part there must be no leak or pressure drop at all all right so for new installations incorporating existing appliances the new part of the installation needs to be gas tight there must be no pressure drop at all and of course there must be no smell of gas if you're working on a flat where it has no specific meter but they have additional ECVs in the flat but with no meter then the pressure drop is always or the permitted pressure drop is always eight millibars so if you're in a flat it's got an AECV an additional ECV then the pressure drop allowed is eight millibars for domestic sized installations not for the big industrial they have a completely different tightness testing procedure but for domestic installations with no appliances connected then you carry out a pipework only test so if there are no appliances on the system this is this happens in new builds where you do the pipe work and somebody else comes and fits the appliances while well, you've moved on and you're doing the pipe work in the next house you've still got to check that the pipe work is tight you carry out a pipe work only test and for pipe work only tests and again you're either going to be asked this in an exam or by the assessor for pipe work only tests remember that you are not allowed any pressure loss at all you're obviously not allowed to have any smell of gas and remember that all joints should be tested so you carry out this tightness test before you bury the pipework or you paint the pipework with corrosion resisting paint you do it before you protect the pipework once a new installation is complete so you've done that and then somebody else comes in and fits the um, appliances then the whole installation needs another um, tightness test but remember to do the pipework only tests before protecting or burying the gas pipes So, as a last comment of this video, and remember this is part one of a two part video, the next part will show you what to do with a let by and tightness test practically. 
then I'll explain how you prepare for a pipework only test. This is a test where you are just testing the pipework. So check the completed installation, check the installation that you've just carried out, all right, and ensure that all the sections are connected. Make sure all the joints are connected correctly i.e. that you've you've soldered all your joints there's not one still hanging there that hasn't been soldered ensure that any open ends have been suitably sealed so if you've got uh, a pipe that's going to a new appliance that hasn't been fitted yet make sure that the end is correctly sealed make sure that the appliances fitted are isolated that is that they're turned off at the isolation valve. You only do this for a pipework only test. When you're just testing your new pipework that you've just fitted, right? You don't do that in a full tightness test of an already existing system, okay? Um, use gas as, as the the test medium so use gas if you can and only use a properly designed leak detection fluid don't use soapy water it doesn't work and it also affects the pipe work and then ensure that all solution is wiped off when completed that is how you prepare for a pipe work only test now Many of the stuff that I've told you here, you will be asked questions on uh, on your refresher or in your in your uh, exams. So please bear in mind, it's not too difficult, but just think about carrying out a tightness test is easy. A five-year-old child could do it, but they they want to know that you know the reasons and the theory behind carrying out tightness tests. The next video will be more practically based um, and I look forward to seeing you there. I hope this one's been helpful.